It makes total sense. What I found in my driver's ed kraus. <laughs> <laughs> Ten out of ten. Hey guys, and welcome to GT Not Live, where you know the sun is shining outside, but we're staying inside to surf the internet because that's what you do in life. Right, Matt? Yeah, who needs outside? Right, who needs outdoors when you have the wealth of entertainment and content available to you at the click of a button via various social networks, YouTube, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. And you know what? It's been a long time since we've done like a, a community celebration, a meme review of sorts. Uh, and so I went back and pulled a bunch of memes from the old Reddit page, uh, the Game Theorist subreddit, if you're not a fan or if you're not following it. Uh, hop on over there, submit stuff for us, because every once in a while, you know, like once a month or so, try to hop into these, because I really like doing these. I really love getting to celebrate the stuff that you're doing. There's an amazing number of new theories that you guys are submitting about Five Nights at Freddy's and Minecraft that have been really interesting for me to read. Um, some really cool ideas in there. Uh, we actually have a theory coming up that was inspired by a game suggestion that happened there on a, a kind of a meme trollish game that I had never heard of, and the biggest video on it had like 10,000 views. Uh, so it's this kind of unknown game, but again, that's all via the subreddit. So if you guys want to contact me in any way, shape, or form, or just engage in the Theorist community, the subreddit and the Discord are like probably two of the best places. It's, it's really a great location. Uh, in other news, Matt just complimented me on my shirts, if you don't mind me saying it. You're going to out me? Yeah, I mean, no, I'm not going to nice out you. As a nice person? As yeah, someone who's nice yeah, to you? Yeah, you you're exposed. <laughs> me or Matt is exposed as a nice person who uh, complimented me on his shirt, so That's thank you. That's a cool you. shirt. Uh, we but, were talking, though, that uh, that I got this from PacSun, which I have never actually shopped at. This is the first item. I, this and the NASA sweatshirt that I wore in a, a previous episode, uh, I think it was the the Rhythm Game one. Um, Everhood. First things I ever bought at PacSun. For years, I always thought that PacSun was way too cool of a place, a store for me to shop at. And and Matt's telling me uh, that I am so wrong. Pat, well, you would be right if it were the year 2016. Okay, okay, 2016. That's yeah. only like five years <laughs> behind schedule. Uh huh. Yeah, because back when like Galaxy Print was cool. Okay. That's like the time yeah. frame that like, of PacSun Pac was cool. Interesting. PacSun's like best item was like, do you remember when shirts had pockets? I do. It, like, I, I do remember that <laughs> wild era where they had pockets. Whoa, crazy. Yes. Uh, it was the signature item was like the plain t-shirt yeah. with like the, the cosmic galaxy print pocket. Oh, interesting. If you had that and you were like roughly 14 yeah you, you were, were the coolest you were the bomb the block. you were the bomb yeah definitely that's that's my language for very cool oh what, what did, did you, you call it back in that? the day no no that was just how kids in my age called it what what was a cool kid in your age you had steez <laughs> excuse I, I don't know if you're insulting me or if you're telling me the answer to my question <laughs> no i just remembered the word steez as i said it what is steez you got it i mean it's drip <laughs> I am so, so, man, I'm, I am making myself look like the biggest dad right now. I, like, oh, yeah, the steez. Got that steez over there. You're dripping all over the place. Good, good drip. What is steez? I think I'm also outing myself as old. I don't think the kids say steez anymore. What, what is steez? Just answer me. What is steez? It's like style. Okay. You got, you got style. I got style. Got I got steez. steez. Yep. That sounds terrible, man. I didn't come up with it. Slang in your era was terrible. It was pretty bad. <laughs> I was going to say, that's pretty rough, honestly. <laughs> like, that's not even sounding cool. Like, drip I get. Like, drip sounds cool. Like, drip sounds cool. You know. Da bomb. I thought da bomb back in my day. Like, that, that made sense. Sounds cool. We also, I feel like we are, I feel like my generation was the generation where we popularized cool as, like, the go like we standardized it as like the go to. Y'all were the awesome generation. We had you? awesome. We yeah. did have awesome. We were post. I lived in a post awesome. You were post awesome. Yeah, society. What what was what was your version of awesome? 
sick. See, uh, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the sick. Hmm. Did you do shady? Sketchy? Ske- we, well, Sketch? sus. Sus. Sus existed pre Among Us. Really? No way. Sus was mm-hmm. sus was before Among Us. It I thought was. Among Us was the thing that really brought sus I mean, into the mainstream. I think that it did, but like, sure. uh, I but said s- sus before. Among oh <laughs> well. So really, now we've all learned. Miramat is the origin of sus. I'm there. It is both a nice guy and also super cool. The audience knows. Matt, you. This is just like a lot about me. Let's laud Matt over here. Uh, last last thing, real quick. So if I want to be cool in 2021, what store do I shop at outside of the Game Theorist merch store? Uh, Available right below this video. I'm assuming. Maybe. Hopefully. I think Urban Outfitters. So I went in there the other day and like. I don't know if I'm getting old or if Urban Outfitters is really cool, but the okay. music they were playing, I was like, I love this song. Brooks Brothers. All about that Brooks Brothers. I want that Brooks Brothers drip, man. Sign me up with a nice sweater vest, a nice khaki, uh, you know, some nice khaki pants, you know, maybe some linen, throw some linen in there. Whoa. Great. Yeah, that's it. TJ All right. Max. What? TJ Maxx. TJ, hey, TJ Maxx got uh, good deals. I'd agree. Good deals. Fantastic deals. Steinmart? I don't think I've ever been in a Steinmart. Huh. What is a Steinmart? They're around. Okay. It's like a worse TJ Maxx. Oh. Oh, well then. <laughs> there you go. Hey, so anyway, uh, today we're doing a, a meme review, hopping back through everyone's uh, favorite posts from the last couple weeks over on the Game Theory subreddit. So let's just bring them up, shall we? Uh, so this one's from Lab Memer 2 When you take one good selfie and you use it for everything... <laughs> Can I copy your homework? Yeah, just change it up a bit so no one knows. <gasps> Wait a minute! It's the, the, yeah, it might be the same. Although, to be fair, I think these are from at least two years apart, maybe three years apart at this point. Because when we did the air, Can You Beat My Game was the ARG two years apart? I don't know. I, I know YouTubers, no joke, I know YouTubers who took pictures of themselves from, I think, like four years ago, and they're still... you. And they're still using the same ones in the thumbnail, and it's the same reactions in every single one. Though, to be fair, uh, I say that as though I'm outing someone, and yet I took one picture of myself at uh, the Square Attack Gaming Convention back in, what, like 2012, 2013? And it is still my avatar in my videos to this day. So, you know, I, I really can't be throwing stones at anyone. I was going to say, the meme is about you. It is. It's true. I know. Oh, I also got to, I also, if I, I got I to gotta give uh, Mr. Beast a hard time because back to back on his Mr. Beast, I think it was Mr. Beast Reacts, he had literally the exact same face in two thumbnails within, released within a day of each other, I think it was. Only one was slightly zoomed in. It was kind of like this, slightly zoomed in. I don't think there was even another filter on it. So... Just it's just one of those YouTube things. Like, oh god, I gotta do another like selfie shoot for a bunch of reaction thumbnails. I guess uh, I always feel really uncomfortable in those, so we try to limit it as much as possible. Um, let's see. Next, next. Oh, it's it's all gone. Where are we going? Where are we going? Oh, there, there it is. It finally shifted. There we go. Hey, wait one minute. This is from that one whooper. Ha ha ha. Someone noticed this, yeah. Uh, game theory, did you know gaming? Film theory, did you know movies? Food theory, did you know food? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, this is this, this is really funny. Uh, Shane and I, um, you know, I, I think he was thinking the same thing about did you know movies back when I was launching film theory. And so when I reached out to him, he's like, oh yeah, this is perfect for us to work together. Uh, to be fair, game theory came out first. Film theory came out slightly before did you know movies. Food theory, he beat me by like two years. Uh, or uh, Did You Know Food beat me by two years. I actually wrote to him in advance of launching Food Theory because we had wanted to do food. As you guys have called out in past videos, uh, I've been seeding out the idea of Food Theory for years. And I think I even I had talked to Shane about it back when he was working with us on uh, Did You Know Movies um, on the Film Theory channel. And... <laughs> And so everyone who's worked with me knew that food theory was a thing long in the works, but Shane uh, definitely did food theory first, but I didn't want him to think that I was like stealing his idea or stepping in his territory. And so like I emailed him in advance of, hey, we're launching a food channel. Is that okay? Uh, just because, you know, even though it's, they're very different channels, they do different things. Um, and obviously like we're not trying to like encroach in his territory at all. There is some level of sensitivity around that sort of thing. And I wanted to be sensitive to him. Uh, and I believe... I believe he wrote back and said it was fine. 
I think, right? That email got sent, right? Sure, absolutely. But it was definitely something I had at least thought about a lot. So, ah, there you go. The did you know? We'll find out what uh, what the next did you know is, and that'll be the final uh, theory channel from the SpongeBob GT Live. Oliver, after Matt Pat tries to make learning fun, <laughs> just take me the wheel and drive. It's true. Um, I talked about this in the SpongeBob episode that we did on GT Live recently, where my job as a parent is to just to make learning fun for Ollie. And uh, for as much as this is a joke, it's not really a joke because ever since Ollie could stand up, I've let him play in the front seat of the car. Not while it's moving or anything. Um, you know, he's always safely in the back. But the, I, there's a lot of button, especially for young kids who are just learning how to manipulate things. It's all, I do X and I get Y response, right? It's all, it's all conditioning. And so to me, I'm like, there's no place better than the car where you push the horn and it beeps. You push a window and it goes down. You, you do the other thing and it goes up. You turn a wheel and the volume goes up or down. Like it is so responsive as a learning place. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm a weird dad. Uh, and so I'm like, yeah, let's play in the front seat of the car. And so he, and, and it's all manipulation stuff too, right? Like they all have different mechanisms. The, the window is a push. The volume is a turn. There's, you know, the horn is a, is a whole hand push that's hard. You can like pull down the, uh, the sun shades and that's a different motion. Uh, pushing lights turns them on and off. And so, especially when Ollie was really young and just learning how to manipulate things, I was all about sitting him in the front seat, the driver's seat, and letting him just touch everything. And I would, I would be there to make sure that like, you know, he wasn't falling off or anything, but I taught him how to buckle a seat belt, this and that. And he loves it. So yeah, this is, um, as much as this is a meme, it is actually uh, really accurate to my parenting strategy. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. What do you think, Matt? Um, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, right. That's, that's the other thing, man. The domino effect of raising a kid. You don't know if you did a good or bad job for I a long remember, time. I just remember, like, being a kid and sitting in the driver's seat and, like, being like, my legs are supposed to reach. Right? Yeah, right? I remember that, too, where I was a young kid and you sit in and you're like, how, how do people reach They're so these far pets? away. They're so far away. It's yeah. forever. Yeah, I agree with that. 100%. Here we go. I don't know about y'all, but I liked it. Yet another normal food theory episode. Rick rolling at the start of the video. Yes, please. Absolutely. Because that is the appropriate way to start a video. You know, Rick Astley never dies. Never dies. He's, he, he, is, he is probably the one meme of all of them that will outlast us all. I hope, I hope the internet just carries that forward. Were you Rick rolled a lot growing up? Like, are you, is that a thing that existed in internet culture as you were kind of growing through the internet? Yeah. Okay. It was like I had just gotten to the internet. Okay, right. Okay, yeah. good. So it, it's still persisting to some extent. Yeah. Uh -huh. People still get Rickrolled. Right, keep it alive. Oh, I just saw something with someone get Rickrolled. Oh, the end of the uh, um, Wreck-It Ralph credits. Oh, yeah, yeah, Wreck-It Ralph, uh-huh, that's right. See, Re or Wreck-It it. Wreck it, Ra Ralph breaks, breaks the, the internet. internet, that's right, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Matthew Fear Patrick. Oh, okay. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, where fear is our middle name. Matthew Fear Patrick. It's a very strange name. Okay, I'll admit it. I didn't give Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> what is this? It's just, it's just a loop. You just ripped off my audio and you looped. <laughs> what? I appreciate the Rayman reference. What is this? What are the comments on this? Are let me dig into the lore of a game. I'm disinterested in it because it makes me more popular. Oh, that's... Thank you. Thank you, 54 Enders. <laughs> nice. Bruh. That's amazing. Great. Yep, that is fantastic. I totally get it. 100%. I'm cool. I get that one. It makes total sense. What I found in my driver's Ed Kraus. <laughs> <laughs> Driver's on cross. <laughs> oh, ten out of ten. It's the capital E, that's really <laughs> right? It's like it's like Ed, Ed, and Eddie yeah. by Ed Kraus. <laughs> oh, sounds like sounds like a stereotypical neighbor in a sitcom. Oh, and this is my neighbor Ed Kraus. <laughs> also, this is incredible. This is this is our generic man, our stock 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 image man. He's in, he's in someone's Ed Kraus now? 
He's advertising for driver safety, proper responsible driving. That's incredible. I wonder, I have no idea who this man is. Maybe, maybe, they, let's, let's put this on the to-do list. Can we do this, Matt? Like, figure out who that guy Find is. Find out who this man is. Maybe that's a whole GT Live. We, we just do a bunch of reverse image searching we to find out that. the true identity of... I love the idea that this guy's in driver's ed, and they're like, can I take a picture of you? And he's like, yeah, one sec. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. Oh, that's great. Yeah, this, uh, clearly, this is the guy in driver's ed. It's amazing. Ed Kraus. From now on, generic man will be known as Ed Kraus. <laughs> Until we find his real identity, I'm just going to call our generic guy Ed Kraus. I'm going to give notes to the editors. I'm going to be like, hey, can we insert Ed Kraus into this, into this episode? And, and the editors are going to be so confused. It's going to make them so mad. You know, Ed! Our good buddy Ed Kraus. They're like, is that a character from the FNAF books? What is that? <laughs> no, it's Ed, guys. Come on. Oh, uh, please work, keyboard. I would love it if this keyboard worked. There we go. Uh, Matt Pat, could you please make a food theory video dissing McDonald's? Me, a Burger King employee, after Matt Pat says, even though he's dissed my company in three videos that he really likes the food there. It is acceptable. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. <laughs> For equal opportunity. Um, no, it is weird that Burger King has come out on the, the negative side of a lot of food theory episodes. I, I don't mean it to, to, for the chips to fall that way. Also, McDonald's just comes out positive in a lot of them. I don't know if it's their PR machine or what, but they just have a lot of good stories about them, I guess. Um, the thing is, and, and the thing about the Theory Channels, and I hope you understand this by now, but we are, we are the chaotic neutral, I like to think. Uh, if, in, in the alignment board, character alignment board, I used to think that I was like lawful good and stuff because I'm very like, you know, by the book and I try to do good. But I realized that the show, like as a person, I think I'm lawful good. But as a show, like as the channels, right, game theory, film theory, food theory at this point, we are chaotic neutral, right, where we have no allegiances to anything or anyone, and anything is within sight of our targets, right? <laughs> like, that's, that's kind of the way I see the channels, where Mario, yeah, sometimes he can be a hero, sometimes he can be a villain. Nintendo, good, I'll talk about their good decisions, I'll talk about their bad decisions, I don't care, I have no loyalties to really any one or anything. Like, there's definitely things that I like more, you know? Like, I, at this point, like, for as much as I give Scott Cawthon a hard time, I, I like and respect the work that he's done with Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, you know, there are certain companies that I think do a much better job than others, uh, you know? And so I'll skew in those directions, I guess. But for the most part, you know, like, nothing, I, I, I don't treat anything as sacred. And I think for some people, that is, that is one of the challenges that they have with our channel as a whole, as a concept, right? Like, how, how do you not hold anything sacred? It's just like, I'm not that type of person, right? Like, Matt and I were talking the other day about, like, what fandom t-shirts I have or, like, what, what fandoms I'm a part of. And honestly, like, I enjoy a lot of different things, but am I such a hardcore devoted fan to something that I'd, like, buy a lot of merch from them? No, not really. Like, every once in a while, I'll, like, pick up an item here or there just because I want to support them. But it's not that it's like, I need to emblazon them and they're a part of my identity, you know? And I think that's a different mentality than a lot of people on the internet, especially the fandoms that we talk about. And so that's why I think the channel sometimes rub people the wrong way. Um, what, what's your alignment, Matt? Are you, what are you? I think I'm chaotic good. Are you chaotic good? Yeah. I could see that. That makes sense to me. Sometimes awful. Yeah. I'm, I, my super ego is too, like, I'm too by the book in a lot of, I feel like I try to adhere within the rules to, to be chaotic. Hmm. Yeah. Are, you by are, the book? What? You by the book? I know, go figure. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. What are you, what are you trying to say, Matt? I feel like that was a low-key bird. Are you, are you knocking my steez? <laughs> no, I would never. I would never. <laughs> low-key bird in my steez? What are the kids saying? Um. <laughs> What are the kids? Jack, your swag. No, that's no, that, old. That was, that's old, that's so man. Old. I was going to say, that's like <laughs> older than me. Get out of here. <laughs> Jack, my swag. <laughs> Why does this keyboard not work anymore? This keyboard's just gone. It's over. Spot the difference. I love that. This is my new favorite meme, by the way. The, the spot the difference Pam memes that you guys submit on the, the, the subreddit are definitely my favorite. Surprise Pikachu. Surprise Stephanie. They're the same picture. You know it. They absolutely are shaggy too cute. Yep. Shaggy toe cute. There it is. They are exactly the same. Make, make Stephanie's surprised face blow up on the internet. Perfect. 
Hey, 10th anniversary game theory stuff. 10th. I love it. 10th anniversary. I'm assuming you corrected the spelling. Well done. Anniversary is one of those weird, dumb words that's hard to get right. Ari. Thank game, you for the fan art. Game the Roy. Game. Oh, get. Good call. Oh, Rick's Rick's Yale theory. You you corrected the anniversary. <laughs> The, the Roy. That's the channel Ed Krause runs. <laughs> this is Ed Krause's channel. <laughs> Welcome to Ed Krause's channel. Game the Roy. Game the Roy. It's consistent though. Game the Roy. <laughs> 10th anniversary. Anniversary. <laughs> anniversary. <laughs> It's oh, amazing. I love this. This is the best. Uh, this being said, actually, uh, I don't know if there's a, a way to do it or whatever, but I need, I'm trying to collect all the fan art that people have submitted over the years because I'm actually working on a personal room in our house, not, not for a set and not really for like a, like, um, not for the office either. I just want a section of our upstairs house where, you know, people come and go and we, we live, you know, I, we live down here too, but like, I, I want a showcase of all the stuff that people have done upstairs that people can kind of walk through and see all the amazing work that the fans have done. Um, and so, yeah, if there's... At some point, I'll figure out a repository. But in honor of the 10th anniversary stuff, I want to make a repository of that so I can collect it and just print it out and showcase to you guys, certainly, but also so we can show it to all our friends and people who visit and just be like, hey, be surrounded by you guys on a more regular basis, which is really cool. Uh, so this this is making the cut, man. Tenth anniversary game, the Roy. Love it. It's so good. Please please change tabs. There we go. Reached out to a friend to help me make this. Here's a film theory thumbnail involving my favorite childhood TV show from Train. I love the Reddit user. Trains are best. Who's really the most useful in Shining Time Station? Oh, that's great. It's definitely not Thomas. Thomas the Tank Engine is such a bad influence in that show drives me nuts did matt did you grow up with shining time station and thomas the tank engine and all that like personally no okay but i don't think i think that was a me thing okay but but it still existed as a kid like because for me like that was one of the the go-to like it was oh. like mr Raj. You, there were kids like you were a shining time station thomas mm. the tank engine kid and that was, I watched it, I enjoyed it. I actually liked the interpersonal drama at Shining Time Station more than I liked the trains on the tracks. I thought that the faces on the trains freaked me out. They're really disturbing. They are freaky. They're freaky. Have you seen the drawings of like him crawling out of his... Yes, out show. of his train. Yeah. yeah, where like he actually crawls out of his exoskeleton and it's really disturbing. Yes, 100%. Um, yeah, I, I love this. You know, this is a valid thumbnail, honestly. Good use of the shock eyes. There's interaction happening here where he's disgusted at what I'm saying. Like, these are all the critical pieces to making a quality uh, film theory thumbnail, so well done. I should do a Shining Time Station uh, Thomas the Tank Engine episode. That would be fun. I've wanted to do, like, a Peppa Pig one, too. I want to dip more into, like, those old nostalgia kids shows. Because they're dark, man. There's got to be some dark secret about Teletubbies, right? I right, think you Teletubbies itself is dark. <laughs> You think so? I don't think there's a secret. <laughs> it's, there. it's just right there at face value. It is staring you in the face how dark that one is. It's great. But yeah, I want to do some of those, so let me know if there's uh, ones that I should tackle. Uh, anyone else wondering what happened to that Fazbear Fright 4 coming home theory? Huh, we'll talk about that. Uh, game theory, three FNAF uh, security breach theories. This is getting out of hand. Now there are three of them. Ha! It's true. We're like Jedi. We multiply. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, so this is a reference to me mentioning in a previous episode that I was going to cover the Coming Home story, which is one of the short stories in uh, the Fazbear Frights series. And it's one of the better ones, too, uh, to be honest. Uh, it's this story about a little girl uh, and her sister and the relationship that they have. The little girl is dead. Um, she was one of the victims of the Fatty Freddy Fazbear Frights murders. Freddy Fazbear murders, the pizzeria murders. Uh, it's, it's basically Susie. Her, it is the story of Susie, the girl who goes on to possess Chica, right? It's, it's very, there's not a whole lot to like talk about as far as from the story's surface, because I've, 
I've been harping on it for years. Susie was like the first girl and she was stuffed into Chica and Chica is Susie. Blah, blah, blah. Like I hit that one over the head. It's the blonde haired girl, the curly haired girl who's taken in uh, FNAF 6. So there's not a whole lot of like, wow, that m blows my mind. It it's pretty much confirmed at this point. Uh, the reason I wanted to talk about this one and the reason why this one never turned out is, and I'm, I'm still holding on to it. I just need to find the right time to work it in. But at a moment in that story, they give you a very precise layout of Susie's house. And they, sh as Chica is chasing Susie through the house, they say, like, she goes to the kitchen, to the living room, to her dad's office, and there's a secret room in her dad's office that unlocks. Like, there's a secret area in the dad's office. And so the whole time I was trying to figure out, could I map... Susie's house to one of the houses or buildings that we see in Five Nights at Freddy's to make a theory about like this is actually Susie's house or this is Fazbear Frights trying to tell us that Susie is actually the one who lived here um and I, I just could never make the the geography work but that detail about there being a hidden room in this house that belonged to her dad you know it, it, it's a branch off of his office it read as very similar to you know, uh, sister location with the underground uh, uh, building, the underground storage center that's attached to, like, their house on the surface. It felt very similar to something that, like, William Afton would have, but I didn't feel justified or it didn't really make sense of, like, oh, Susie is actually William Afton's daughter. Like, that's stupid. So it's, it's a detail that I have in the back of my mind that's going to pay off somewhere. And I just don't know how. And I don't know if it's like a vague allusion to the houses and the connections to sister location or if there's something more there. Because that story feels packed with a lot of details. It feels connected to FNAF 6. It feels connected to sister location. It feels connected to Susie's story. It's connected to, it feels connected to FNAF 4 in some weird ways. There's a lot mixed into it. And I'm not sure what is actually valid lore-wise versus what is just kind of details for the story you know so anyway that's where that theory went i haven't forgotten about it it's just i haven't figured out the right way to use it and sometimes theories work that way where i'll hold on to an idea for years uh years and years i've been wanting a film theory on the economics of stark industries for uh for the last ever since um spider-man homecoming uh ever since spider-man homecoming showed that tony stark uh basically boxed out uh, the the like little guy company that was collecting all the garbage in the aftermath of the Avengers movie, uh, and Tony Stark rolls into town and his company is like, nope, this is our zone now. We got the government contract to collect all this alien tech, and the villain of Spider-Man: Homecoming is like, we're just the little guy. We're the local g cleanup crew, and they're like, nope, you're out. I'm like, Tony Stark and his company is actually pretty bad, and all these government contracts that they're like, the economics of superheroes is something that I'm looking into now and so after like what three four years of letting this theory percolate it's finally getting made into episodes and i'm figuring out how to use it so again just because something i mentioned something and sometimes it's a long time away um strongly zach varmatech built the dark troopers from the mandalorian they look exactly like his zach bots that is not a bad theory actually look they do i see the similarities i see it in fact I like Zack's better, honestly. I think the Zack bot. The, the true theory here is who would win in a battle? The Zack bots or the, the Dark Troopers? I think Zack bots got it. Just saying. Also, fun fact. Uh, so if I were giving notes on this as a thumbnail, because we talk about thumbnails a lot. Um, you know, we would figure out spacing of this. I would probably move this down to the bottom so that way it wasn't conflicting with the logo. I would move the logo into the bottom corner. Uh, the red background is actually conflicting with the red of the text, so might want to change your color of the starburst or whatever, but that's, that's, just, that's just my opinion. Uh, cracking the YouTube algorithm. YouTube theory. Oh, it's a game theory parody. Okay, cracking the YouTube algorithm. Oh, great. I love these. That's I love it. when people do parodies. I found it. I finally found it. <laughs> this is me. That's, this is accurate. Oh, this is great. Wait, what channel is this? Cheezer Brothers. Okay. Alright, Cheezer Brothers, show me what you got. I like that you're using, like, the intro from 2012, 2013. <laughs> Great. Oh, YouTube Theory. Hello, Internet. Ooh, Welcome to YouTube Theory. The show where, just like the YouTube algorithm, 
we're constantly pumping out trash. <laughs> now, I've been studying the YouTube algorithm for months now, and I have just made a big breakthrough. Oh, nice. Okay. And I mean a big breakthrough. Oh, big boy Yoshi. Okay, okay. Big Yoshi. You be saying, but Matt Pat, this sounds crazy. Oh, good, good. But hear me out. And I will blow your mind. Okay, blow my mind. Look at this guy. Yes. Now, you all know who this is. I do. Dream has quickly risen to be one of the most popular YouTubers it's on the It's crazy. Platform. Huge. He's defined huge. a whole new era of Minecraft on YouTube. This is accurate. But how exactly did he do Couldn't have said this better myself, Matt Pat. Well, let's drop that question for a second and look at another gargantuan YouTuber. Gargantuan. The odd one's out. Yeah. The odd one's out is another genre definer. It's true. Well, not the first James. channel of its kind on YouTube. The other ones out ushered in an entirely new generation of story time animation. True, shows. there was a big algorithm now, change. Now pull up their profile and he was pictures at the forefront. right next to each other. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, this now, is funny. Oh, I, I got stuff to say about this. Boom! A circle with a simple face and an oval for the body. And it's not just them. Popular creators all over the platform have that same <laughs> style <laughs> of profile. Yeah. Coincidence? I think not. Now. What does this all mean? This is mean? so old school game theory. I love it. It means that this, this is, is our new profile picture. <laughs> See you at 10 mil, boys. <laughs> See you at 10 mil. In the meantime, remember, that's just a Oh, I did a, I did a collab with this guy. I didn't even remember. Theory. Thanks for watching. Wow. That's that's great. That was great. And honestly, like, I know that that's, that's a joke and it's a parody, but it's not. Like, so here's the thing. And this is something that we've actually consulted companies with, and it's it's a big trend right now. And and I know that this was for the memes and the jokes, but there's actually a lot of truth to this. Um, right now, if you look at popular channel or like one of the big trends that are that's very popular in digital content right now, it's anonymous hosts uh, who are animated or are um, you know hiding their identity in some way, right? So, like, Dream obviously has not done a face reveal, and that's been a big thing. Uh, he joked about his face reveal. Uh, you have Annie tubers, obviously. But you also have the VTubers. Uh, you know, the people who... Th there are characters, but they're animated characters who are reacting and playing games and joking and things like that. And that's been this huge explosion in uh, the popular creator scene right now. And you're seeing, you're seeing these anonymous... They're, they're faceless channels kind of, like, skyrocketing in popularity... Uh, and we think it's largely tied to a, a cultural trend, right? So my generation, and I'll be curious to get your thoughts on this, Matt, but when people survey like my generation and, and, and a little bit older than us, um, the, the fear that they have a lot, maybe not me, I, I think I'm falling on the other side, but slightly older than us, um, the fears that people have about privacy online is giving up credit card numbers. They're afraid to give up their bank information, their personal ID numbers, things like that. They do not trust the internet for that stuff. Um, but they're fine, you know, using webcams and this and that. All, my generation, and slightly younger than us, uh, we are the generation, we're fine making online purchases, you know. Uh, it's, it's funny, my parents will not make an online purchase for their life, or if they do, they will buy a debit card with like $100 and then use whatever that exact amount is for the purchase, and then they use that, and then it's gone. So that way no one can steal the money from it. Um, for us you know, our generation is afraid of, of the camera, right? There, you see a lot of people of my generation and, and below covering up their camera, you know, making sure that the microphones are muted or deinstalled, things like that. It's their image and their, their face being online and the computer listening to them, that's the major concern for them. And so I think this anonymous YouTuber uh, kind of surge that we're seeing with these with faceless avatars and things like that are one, uh, it, it's a it's a response to that, but then two, um, two is there's a lot of fan created like fans being able to do fan art for you is huge, right? Like that is one of the best ways to engage in fandom and to have a community, right? Where I create artwork and other people see that artwork and it inspires me to do my own, and we all like uplift each other as a creator community, and you see that a lot in Five Nights at Freddy's where you know. Fox, bunny, bear, stuff like that, that, that can be recreated over, chicken, that can be recreated over and over again, and that community is filled with artists, and you have your identities there. Um, Dream, Odd Ones Out, a lot of these, those characters that he showed, very easy to reproduce, right? And so you don't have to be good at artwork 
to be able to reproduce it. And you can take that image and apply it in a lot of different areas. And so it becomes easier to meme, it becomes easier to riff on, it becomes easier to make your own fan art around, and it just helps foster the community that much more. And so this is me doing way too long of a digression about this meme, but it's, I, even though it's for the jokes, there's actually a lot of truth to it and it follows a lot of the trends that we're seeing on the platform and that, in fact, this is funny, I was actually thinking about doing a meta theory about it because I'm like, I haven't done a meta theory about like trends on YouTube in a long time. I want to sit down on the couch and do a meta theory and I was thinking about doing it exactly on this topic. So there you go. You heard it here first, friends. When, it, when you see me in a thumbnail on the couch being like this or like YouTube has changed, uh, <laughs> chances are I, that's what I'm going to be talking about. What do you think, Matt? I think you're right. Thank I didn't you. think about, because what I was thinking was, like for my generation specifically, yeah. if you're famous on the internet for anything, yeah. you're automatically an influencer. Right. Like you have to sort of like present your face and like yeah. be on Instagram and be on Twitter and TikTok. Yeah. But like if you don't have a face, right. then you can have fame and success online while being able to While like, being anonymous. Exactly. Yeah. Like being able to escape that influencer yep. role. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think about like the, the recreation aspect of like fan art. I think that that's really smart yeah 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 it, it is kind of a best of both worlds right where you're like able it, it, it's this interesting mix of a lot of things working together like you said you you can get the the fame and fortune but you can all it also is easier for audiences to project onto you as mm -hmm. well like just like a, a you know in video games you have it all the time the like silent protagonist where they don't say anything because you're projecting yourself into the hero role and everyone else around you is reacting to you this is the same thing right where like you can project yourself like, you know, Dream, he could be white, black, girl, transgender, whatever, it doesn't matter. I mean, his voice kind of leads you to lead like, oh, it's male in some capacity, but who knows. But you can project yourself onto that character and it could be anything, and that's really cool. Um, it's very equal opportunity, which is nice. So anyway, uh, long story short, this was a joke. We took it way too seriously because, of course, we do. And there's probably going to be a meta theory about this exact joke, so there it is. Fascinating. Cool. I'm glad. To, oh, only cans. Um, yes. Uh, yes. Yo, yo, le cake. Uh, yes, we are actually going to do an, I'm looking into only cans right now. Thanks to your suggestion here. Um, it looks very intriguing. It's an, it, for those of you who don't know, it is an only fans joke, like an only fans parody game. Uh, but it apparently has some deep, dark lore to it. I'm looking into it now and I'm going to be working on that theory later this week. So, You'll see that in your inbox soon. Your sub feed inbox. What am I saying inbox? Matt Gat Matt Pat's guide to clickbait. <laughs> yep, that's it. Get that nice arrow in there. I like it if it swoops in a little bit. You know, you're see you're overlapping where he's pointing though. So, but look at all those points. Oh, great. Love all those arrows. The only thing that would make this better is if there was like three more arrows on this side, but otherwise it's great. Oh, gay for the <laughs> I would, I would actually click on that. I, right? I would watch this. I would absolutely watch this. It also makes me want to like look into this theory and be like, ah, is there a relationship between these guys? I could see it. The sexual tension between them. Are you for the <laughs> He's real. <laughs> he is. He's real and he's coming for you. Ronald McDonald. He's real. Oh, that's great. Uh, just saw this on Butch Hartman's Instagram and had to share it. YouTubers as Danny Phantom ghosts. YouTubers. Wait, is that me? Is that me? Am I? Or is that just, does it just look like, is this one of those times where it looks like me or is this supposed to be me? It, I can see the similarity. And Butch Hartman does know that I exist as a human being. We it's have. a cool thing that you get to tell people. That Butch Hartman knows, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we, we collabed on a, uh, a thing back in the day. Oh, I know. Yeah. I've seen did you see that I've one? done my research. Okay, good. Yeah, right? It's cool. It's really, it's really, really cool to, you know, and he's, I mean, as an artist, he's incredible. I know that he's gotten into some controversy lately, and so, you know, that is what it is, but just removing that as an artist, like, the fact that he's able to just come up with this stuff, and, and I watched him do it live in real life, in real time, and it's just crazy how this stuff just pops out of his head. It's, it, I wish I had that art ability. I, I really admire artists who are just able to, like, envision something and translate it onto a page or a screen in some way. So that's really cool. Uh, remember Matt Daddy? Sudden investment? Oh, do I remember Matt Daddy? Don't you call me Matt Daddy! None of that! Happy anniversary! Happy 10-year anniversary, 
covering a little bit of everything. Security Breach, Bendy, all Funkin', Beat Saber, Kirby, Cuphead. Oh, yeah, a little bit of everything in here. Nice. Sans. It's kind of hiding out back there. <gasps> 100,000, 100, wait, 100,000 or 100 million raised? Is that, that seems like another comma back there. Raised 100 million for charity, that'd be incredible. Nice, I love it, that's great, thank you. Oh, couldn't think of one for food theory, so here are my two. How strong would you have to be to hold the buster sword? Absolute, <laughs> look, ah, there's Ed Krause. Ed Krause showing off his guns to pick up the buster sword. Um, I'll get to this in a second, here, and then another one. Could Jurassic Park actually happen? That's funny. So with this one, uh, back again, when I had a full-time job outside of doing YouTube, uh, when I was working at Defy Media, um, before they collapsed into the garbage fire that they were, uh, one of the channels that I was in charge of supervising was the AWME channel, A-W-E-M-E. -E. I did not come up with a channel name that was there before I, I showed up. But one of the things I did help them out with uh, and kind of supervise over was the production of this uh, show called Man at Arms, where they had a real-life blacksmith forge video game weapons in real life. And I got to advise on what anime video game weapons, uh, you know, things to from fiction to do in real life. Uh, and the Buster Sword was one of those. And it's incredible like it's it's completely not usable because the thing is so darn heavy it took like three of them to actually lift it and if you actually wanted to swing it you would just like prop it up and then just let it fall on things and it wasn't so much a deadly sword that would slice you in half it was just a deadly sword that would just like bludgeon you to death because it's just a giant sheet of metal um i forget how much it ended up weighing uh, but yeah, if you've never seen those videos, I'm sure they're still buried back there somewhere. It's all me, A-W-E-M-E, -E, Man at Arms, and there's, it was a great series. Uh, I advised on the, the content of it. I did not advise on the production of it. It cost an egregious amount of money, and they lost a huge amount of money every single episode. So, fun times there. <laughs> that, that's why the series ultimately ended, and probably why Defy collapsed as a company. Anyway, that's none of my business. Uh, it was actually for a little bit, and I'm still salty about it. <laughs> uh, Mibgi, I may, I've made life itself. Is Stan Waluigi? Yes! It's the theory that we always needed. We needed the Gravity Falls Waluigi crossover. But wait, and here's the big twist of the episode. It's actually Golden Freddy the entire time. <laughs> Mind blow. Amazing. Incredible. Who would have thunk it? 10th anniversary made a little drawing of the past decade. I can't draw stick figures well. My stick figures suck as well. Look, Henry Stickman looks great. I still need to do a Henry Stickman theory, honestly. I need to get on that. We keep looking into the lore here and there, and it just, it doesn't adhere for some reason. Uh, Magnuson, hidden, oh man, more episodes on Undertale? I, I think I've, I think I've squeezed every last detail of Undertale. There's nothing left to discuss with Undertale, except for this, that Sansa's head is actually an Easter egg. <laughs> Mind blow. It'll be Sansa's Nest Part 2. It'll be amazing. Oh, fourth channel! So, it, Matt, who is this guy? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he's a musician of some form. Uh, his name is Da Baby. Da Baby. Mm -hmm. One is word. Rapper, hip hop? Hip -hop? Uh, yeah, he raps. Yeah. He's a rapper. Is he just a big meme now? <laughs> should I, I know, should I know so. this meme? I, like, I love the picture. He's, got, he's, he's doing a great uh, click me thumbnail. I think I saw his face on Thomas the tank engine recently <laughs> i think that's was it was he I crawling saw. out of the tank <laughs> well ed kraus was actually conducting the entire time <laughs> i don't really get this meme you don't okay good i don't okay great uh, we're f i'm old huh uh, yeah, right you're you're getting old man welcome welcome <laughs> i'm I'm, a, I'm to retirement age at this point matt jeez <laughs> if you're old i should be retiring <laughs> soon Put me in a home if someone could explain it in the comments actually, yeah explain explain what the meme is i'm assuming it's just like he's got a funny face and he's pointing at him and he's got a little guy on his hat he does have a little guy on his i don't hat. know three videos of matt for each channel pringles doritos are they even real crisps which is the superior crisp that's actually fair whether pringles are actually potato chips is uh fair up for debate because they're actually i believe potato flakes that have been repressed into the pringle shape right i've seen the gourmet makes episode yeah there you go so I don't know if that would actually qualify as a, a potato chip or crisp. Um, Are tortilla chips chips? 
I think so. I, we have to look at what the definition of a chip is, mm. right? I think that's the big question. Was it cursed? SmackDown versus Raw. What if Anakin never turned to the dark side? Movies would have probably been a lot better. He would have been upset about sand for the rest of his life. Made this a while back as part of a joke. Uh, cringy username. The truth about Eagle Man! Oh, man. Is Jake from State Farm actually Eagle Man? Love it. Do you know Eagle Man, Matt? Um, no. Oh, after this, you and I are going to watch Eagle Man. Okay. Cause I do it, know Jake from State Farm. I, it, it, he's great. Great guy. Yeah. Very nice. Very affable. Very friendly. But did you know that when he removes his face... Uh, he's actually an eagle man. He's actually a giant human-sized eagle. <laughs> huh. Put that one... Let, tweet that one at State Farm. <laughs> he's actually a giant human-sized eagle. There it is. Uh, Navid. Navid D. I made one for each channel. <laughs> How ha Very. Max handsome. Oh, look at that face. Oh, Nintendo's Dark Secret. Oh, it is. It's it's why it's why Smash Brothers doesn't include Waluigi. They have a prejudice against Waluigi. That's true. Look at that. They even did the face manipulation. Or maybe that's from one of our videos. I could see it working either way. Either way, it's brilliant. Can can you eat it? A mattress. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past us as an episode, honestly. <laughs> could you eat a mattress? Probably not. I I can't imagine. I, I kind of love the I love the idea though. Um, Nabe Sop, Vsauce's true identity is actually Bill Nye the Science Guy. Uh, not true. Uh, Michael from Vsauce is actually much nicer than Bill Nye. As much as I love Bill Nye and how much he was my childhood hero, he is a little bit curmudgeonly as a human being at this point, sadly. So yeah, Michael, I can confirm theory. I I can say theory, theory busted in that case. Uh, that's just a sus theory. Thanks for watching from Ann Bernick, Ann Bernick fan. Sus imposter. It's true. Th they are one the same. They are probably the same. Just take the Sans's nest format and slot them in with the arrow. And we got it. GTL thumbnail event. This is so they did a thumbnail event on the subreddit. Truth about Count Chocula is actually Waluigi. I could see it. I could see it. Same long nose. Same long chin. Same point. Same pointed ears. Matt! We cracked it. I didn't. And they did. They, they cracked, cracked it. it. The question, though, is is it a food theory or is it a game theory? See, this is what we should have done on April 1st. <laughs> that, that should have been our, our April Fool's Day theory. Oh, Sans is actually an anagram. <laughs> Sans is actually an anagram. Sans. I, could, I would love to do this in an actual video, and we slowly change the letters, and you think it's spelling out something else. <laughs> and then it just reveals to be Sans again. Oh, that's great. They're related. They're the same person. Who knew? Oh, we did that. That's great. All Game Theory openings at the same time. Ooh, that sounds cool. For 10-year anniversary. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> this has gone horrifically off the rails. Oh no! So much happening! <laughs> oh, it's so great! <laughs> wow. Oh, so good! You even had them end at the same time? That's incredible. We have had a lot of different opening sequences. I think at this point, um, there's a couple videos that have compiled pretty much all the openings that we've done, including special openings. Um, where we do them like episode specific or thematic we you know spooky ones for fnaf things like that we've done so many openings at this point like over 80 openings i think in total it's crazy um and it's awesome to see the pro the the progression of them <laughs> look at that original look at look at look at that one my head popping open it took me a decade and a half to do in uh, my very simple photo editor back in the day look at that hair just reaching for the sky it's like jimmy neutron hair MatPat's brain in a nutshell. Is 10 a lot? Depends on the context. FNAF games, yes. FNAF theories, no. <laughs> it's true! That's very accurate. It's all a matter of perspective, guys. How to flirt. Uh, this is from All, all or Mad 13. Baby girl, I know video game lore you wouldn't even care about. Yes! You got my. Now you have my attention. Yes, please. Oh, that's great. I love that. Show me the best Pokemon Evil team. Team Rocket. No. No, not them either. It's, yeah, that's us. We are the, we are the true villain of the Pokemon universe because 
you know, forget Plasma, forget Team Magma, forget all, all those posers. It is absolutely us. We're the one that Nintendo and Pokemon have to fear. And finally, Peep Chew Peep. There he is. That's adorable. Just in time for Easter, even though Easter happened a long time ago. So there you go. Me happily living my life with the FNAF addiction that died five years ago. FNAF security breach. FNAF VR. Help wanted. It keeps dragging you back in. I understand. I am right there. Somehow ties a Grubhub commercial to Jimmy Neutron. Who thought the video on Grubhub would be like an April Fool's video? Did not expect that. So, to be fair, uh, people still don't know if that was an April Fool's joke or not. It started as one, and I don't think it is anymore. Um, it, it, it started as like, oh, let's talk about Grubhub lore. That's kind of dumb. And then the more we looked into it, we're like, oh, there, there's actually lore here. And we, we, I, I'm about 80% certain that the lore is actually real. The connection to Jimmy Neutron, I think, is an animator who did an Easter egg just as a reference. Um, because he was bored and needed to dress the characters in something or whatever. But long and short, at this point, I think it's real. I think, I think, I think we've spoken it into reality and we might see more down the line. But it started as a joke theory to do on April Fool's. It became a real theory that just happened to air on April Fool's. And I think even the most extreme part of that, which is the Jimmy Neutron connection, might become real moving forward. We'll have to keep an eye on Grubhub for that one, I guess. Uh, all right. So that is it for uh, meme theory, I guess, today, friends. Uh, so thank you guys for submitting them. And as always, please continue to submit things to the Game Theorist subreddit. Um, I'm trying to pop back in at least once a month to check on everything that's going on there. Uh, the moderators do a phenomenal job of doing activities for everyone like this was the month of thumbnails the previous month that I didn't get to talk about was a lot of logos presented by you guys so maybe one day I can go back and hop through some of those that you did in uh, I think it was what was it February or March uh, I didn't get a chance to actually spotlight you guys um, so there's always a lot of fun stuff going on there's always a lot of cool theories happening over there uh, for the community and like I said I read a lot of them and I'm always aware of parody videos, theory pitches, things like that. So keep them coming and I will, you know, <laughs> keeps the channel running, you know. Uh, so thank you guys so much for being just such an awesome part of this amazing community for the last 10 years. Uh, just as a reminder, Game Theory merch is available. The 10 year anniversary merch is available to the end of the month. So help celebrate the big milestone with us if you haven't picked it up yet. And I'll see you all in the next video. So remember, it wasn't a live stream, but it was a video just for you. See you later. Mm.